Hi folks, welcome back for part 14 of Puzzle Agent. Yes, I know, that's not the full title. Shut up. So we click around here. Not finding any gum. But we got some we can look at. I'm looking at a photograph of the Brotherhood. Isaac and Mike Lobb seem to be part of this group. And they seem to be friends. Interesting. That's strange. Okay, I'm gonna need some okay, real Bjorn. answers now. Okay, Bjorn, come on. What exactly is going on Dish. here? What's wrong with these people? They are in deep meditation. If you open your mind and let yourself hear the whispers, there will be no mysteries in life you cannot solve. Speak to them yourself if you want solutions. What are these little creatures I keep seeing? They are not creatures. Sorry about that, folks. They are people older than any of us. Knocked over a can. in what nature still exists around us. Isaac Davner's still alive, isn't he? The lock on the factory door. He didn't build it himself. You put it there to keep him in. Or to keep people out. Why? He has been spoken to. It is actually a great honor to have been chosen. Chosen for what? That is not for us to ask. I'm gonna need a second to question these people. Do what you must. And now all three of them are kind of Rot, stoned. Trees, animals. But we gotta talk Do to you. Ever you stop and watch the birds, Mr. Tethers? Mm. Mr. Tethers. Forum of crows congregating in rows. An alignment for clothes is an omen of woes. Weird little poem there. A quorum of crows. Bjorn has photos that show a quorum of crows on his clothesline. A dark omen. Keeping in mind that the images overlap, what's the minimum number of crows pictured? This is the one I mentioned earlier that you would just kind of have to trust me that I know how this goes. Because the way I did this was to take a screenshot, uh, open up paint, cut out all these images, and start overlapping them. And the way I found it is the bluebirds here are on the ends of the line. And from there we overlap the photos. And if I recall correctly, this one was overlapped by... Where is it? This one, which was overlapped by this one, which was overlapped by this one, which went on top of this one. Which is right, because you see you got the two crows here and there. Then they have, then they meet into this and yeah. So I, once it's all said and done, I came up with five. And I'll show you, and when it comes back you can uh, rewind the video and go back and forth if you want to but I'll bring up the uh, how it brings up the full uh, shot of them but yeah this is the far left this is the far right and these three get arranged in the middle and I'm pretty sure when I when it was all said and done it went from this one to this one to this one to this one to this one Okay, let's look. See if you pay attention, yeah. The trio here was in the middle. The one with a uh, one red bird and two crows was number four. The two red birds and two crows was number two. Let's see, it's a lot harder to show That's you that when I'm the machine don't have, locking the factory. Where did you get that? Have, um, the paint and all that up. You see them, don't you? Listen to their words. Their riddles. The Grickleback Baffler. 
Edward knows it's time to restock the Windawachi River with Gricklebacks. Drag the four clutches of fits fish to release points, keeping in mind these rules. Schools will swim toward the river, splitting evenly at each fork. A school that can't split evenly will be paralyzed with indecision. The marsh marmots eat all fish who enter their turf. The marmots are either in mipfic marsh or a abdominal swamp, but not both. You have one or the other, but we don't know which one. Exactly 16 fish must arrive safely at the river. No more, no less. Okay. Your little things that eat that, that eat the fish are in either in here or here. But in either case, we need to assume that they can be in one or the other. We need to assume that they're in either one and make If I can say this correctly, regardless of which uh place the marsh marmots happen to be, we have to make sure that 16 fish get to the river either way. So, starting with rule one, if, <coughs> excuse me, starting with rule one, rule one, schools will swim toward the river splitting evenly. Well, if they can't split, they get paralyzed. So we've got an odd numbered clutch here, so they have to be in the one place that no splits happen because they won't make it any further. But from here it gets a little bit trickier. We have to make sure that we have a grand total of 1, 2, 3, 7, 13, 21 fish. We need 16 to survive. So that means exactly 5 have to get eaten. Regardless of whichever way it goes across, we have to have exactly five die. Fair enough. So, let's stick four here. So, if they're in here, four get eaten, zero get eaten so far. Stick that there. And we stick that there. There's logic here, folks. Okay. So what we do is we make sure that five will cross each of these paths. Under both, we make sure that five crosses each one. So, these four split into two going this way and two going this way. That means that two will end up here, and when these two get up here, one goes here and one goes here. So one will end up here from the first, from this batch. This batch, we have four end up here which equals one from here, four from here, exactly five have landed here. Good that way. Now we got two here, and we got a list of six here. Three go this way, and three go this way, so we've got two plus three going here. So, no matter which side the marsh marmots inhabit, they will get exactly five fish, which is exactly what we want. It's kind of confusing to explain. Maybe they do a better job. Exactly five fish need to run into the marmots. Since the three fish clutch can't split in half, it needs to go to point D. It can't be the six or eight fish clutch at A, so it must be the four fish at point A. To make a total of five fish at the B and C locations, we need three additional fish to go through the swamp and four fish to go through the marsh. That means we release eight fish at point B and six fish at point C. Hopefully that explained anything I didn't. That's it. Only one, one more, more piece. piece. And it's this guy right here. Anything new? Nope. All we can do is open, open our, our minds. minds. The language of the hidden ones is expressed in puzzles. Perplexed sock picker. The probability is you'll be able to solve Skolder's Riddle. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Blind Lars Jorgsen's mother knitted him 25 pairs of socks. 
Five striped, five plaid, five spotted, five argyle, and five with owls playing fiddle. Oh, we get to solve this one next time, folks. So until then, take care, everybody. See you next time.